The Second Book of Kings, Chapter 4 The Widow's Olive Oil The wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that he revered, revered the Lord, but now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. Elisha replied to her, How can I help you? Tell me, what do I have? Uh, what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a small jar of olive oil. She, Elijah said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour oil into all the jars and as each filled, put it to one side. So. Uh, she left him and shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, Bring me another one. But he replied, There is not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God and he said, Go, sell the oil and pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what is left. Shunammite's son restored to life. One day, Elisha went to Shunem, and a well-to-do woman was there, who urged him to stay for a meal. So whenever he came by, he stopped there to eat. She said to her husband, I know that this man who often comes our way is a holy man of God. Let's make a small room on the roof and put in it a bed at, and a table, a chair and a lamp for him. Then he can stay there whenever he comes to us. One day when Elisha came, he, he went up to his room and lay down there. He said to his servant Gehazi, call the Shunammite. So he called her and she stood before him. Elisha said to him, Tell her, you have gone to all this trouble for us. Now that can be, uh, now what can, what can be done for you? Can we speak on your behalf to the king or the commander of the army? She replied, I have a home among my own people. What can be done for her? Elisha asked. Gehazi said, she has no son, and her husband is old. Then Elijah said, Call her. So he called her, and she stood in the doorway. About this time next year, Elijah said, You will hold a son in your arms. No, my lord, she objected. Please, a man of, a man of God, don't mislead your servant. But the woman became pregnant, and the next year, about that same time, she gave birth to a son, just as Elijah told her. The child grew, and one day he went out his, to his father, who was with the reapers. He said to his father, My uh, head, my head. His father told the servant, Carry him to his mother. After the servant had lifted him up and carried him to his mother, <clears throat> the boy sat on her lap until noon, and then he died. She went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, then shut the door and went out. She called her husband and said, Please send me one of the servants and the donkey so I can go to the man of God quickly and return. Why go to him today? He asked. It's not the new moon or the Sabbath. That's all right, she said. She saddled the donkey and said to her servant, Lead on, don't slow down for me unless I tell you. So she set out and came to the man of God at Mount Carmel. When he saw her in the distance, the man of God said to his servant Gehazi, Look, there is the Shunammite. Run to meet her and ask her, Are you all right? Is your husband all right? Is your child all right? Everything is all right, she said. When she reached the man of God at the mountain, she took hold of his feet. Gehazi came over to push her away, but the man of God said, 
leave her alone. She is in, the, in bitter distress, but the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me why. Did I ask you for a son, my Lord? She said. Didn't I tell you I don't raise my hopes? Elijah said to Gehazi, Tuck your cloak into your belt, take my staff in your hand and run. Don't greet anyone you meet, and if anyone greets you, do not answer. Lay my staff on the boy's face. But the child's mother said, As surely as the Lord lives and you live, I will not leave you. So he got up and followed her. Gehazi went on ahead and laid the staff on the boy's face, but there was no sound or response. So Gehazi went back to meet Elisha and told him, The boy has not awakened. When Elisha reached the house, there was a boy lying dead on his couch. He went in, shut the door on the two of them and prayed to the Lord. Then he got on the bed and lay on the boy mouth to mouth, eyes to eye, hands to hands. And as he stretched himself out on him, the boy's body grew warm. Elisha turned away and walked back and forth in the room and then got on the bed and stretched out on him once more. The boy sneezed seven times and opened his eyes. Elijah summoned Gehazi and said, Call the Shunammite. And he did. When she came, he said, Take your son. She came in, fell at his feet, and bowed to the ground. Then she took her son and went out. Death in the pot. Elisha returned to Gilgal, and there was a famine in the region. While the company of the prophets was meeting with him, he said to his servant, Put on the large pot and cook some stew for these prophets. One of them went out into the fields to gather herbs and found a wild vine and picked, uh, picked at many of its gourds as his garment could hold. When he returned, he cut them up into the pot of stew, though no one knew what they were. The stew was poured out for the men, but as they began to eat it, they cried out, Man of God, there is death in the pot, and they could not eat it. Elijah said, Get some flour. He put it onto, on, into the pot and said, Serve it to the people to eat, and there was nothing harmful in the pot. Feeding of a hundred. A man came from Baal Shel Shaliha, bringing the man of God twenty loaves of barley bread baked from the first ripe grain, along with some heads of new grain. Give it to the people to eat, Elijah said. How can I set this before a hundred men? His servant asked, but Elijah answered. Give it to the people to eat. So this is what the Lord says. They will eat and have some left over. Then he set it before them, and they ate and had some left over, according to the word of the Lord. Naaman healed of leprosy. Chapter 5. Now Naaman was commander of the army of the king of Aram. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded because through him the Lord had given victory to Aram. He was a valiant soldier, but he had leprosy. Now bands of raiders from Aram had gone out and had taken captive a young girl from Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. Naaman went to his master and told him what the girl from Israel had said. By all means, go, the king of Aram replied. I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman left, taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten sets of clothing. The letter that he took to the king of Israel read, with this letter, I am sending my servant, Naaman, to you so that you may cure him of his leprosy. As soon as the king of Israel read the letter, 
he tore his robe and said, Am I God? Can I kill and bring back to life? Why does this fellow send someone to me to be cured of his leprosy? See how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. When Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his robes, he sent him this message. Why have you torn your robes? Have the man come to me and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elijah's house. Elijah sent a messenger to stay, say to him, Go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan and your flesh will be restored and you will be cleansed. But Naaman went away angry and said, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, wave his hand over the spot and cure me of my leprosy. Are not Abana and Farpa, the river of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Couldn't I wash in them and be cleansed? So he turned and went off in a rage. Naaman's servant went to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more than when, the, when he tells you, wash and be cleansed? So he went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times, as the man of God had told him, and his flesh was restored and became clean like that of a young boy. Then Naaman and all his attendants went back to the man of God. He stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the world except in Israel, so please accept a gift from your servant. The prophet answered, as surely as the Lord lives, whom I serve, I will not accept a thing. And even though Naaman urged him, he refused. If you will not, said Naaman, please let me, your servant, be given as much earth as a pair of mules can carry, for your servant will never again make burnt offerings and sacrifices to any other god but the Lord. But may the Lord forgive your servant for this one thing. When the, my master enters the temple of Rimon to bow down and is leaning on my arm as I have bowed there also. When I bow down in the temple of Rimon, may the Lord forgive your servant for this. Go in peace, Elijah said. After Naaman had traveled some distance, Gehazi, the servant of Elijah, the man of God, said to himself, my master was too easy on Naaman, this Aramean, by not accepting from him what he brought. As surely as the Lord lives, I will run after him and get something from him. So Gehazi hurried after Naaman. When Naaman saw him running toward him, he got down from the chariot to meet him. Is everything all right? He asked. Everything is all right, Gehazi answered. My master sent me to say, Two young men from the company of the prophets have just come to me from the hill country of Ephraim. Please give them a talent of silver and two sets of clothing. By all means, take two talents, said Naaman. He urged Gehazi to accept them and then tied up the two talents of silver in two bags with two sets of clothing. He gave them two two of his servants, and they carried them ahead of Gehazi. When Gehazi came to the hill, he took the thing from the servants and put them away in the house. He sent the men away, and, he, and they left. When he went in and stood before his master, Elisha asked him, Where have you been, Gehazi? Your servants didn't go anywhere, Gehazi answered. But Elisha said to him, was not my spirit with you when the man got down from his chariot to meet you? Is this the time to take money or to accept clothes or olive groves and vineyards or flocks and herds or male and female slaves? Naaman's leprosy will cling to you and to your descendants forever. Then Gehazi went from Elisha's presence and his skin was leprous. 
it had become as white as snow. An exit of uh, unexed flood floats. Amen.